Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about how to create an experience. If people want to shop at your company and they want to get services through you, we have to create an experience for them to love. So if you have a business, if you're thinking about having a business, either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. We have a ton of episodes. Literally, if you put them in the back of a truck, it would probably weigh a ton. We have 200 plus episodes, like 210, 220 episodes, all at least 30 minutes long about everything. You can watch me gain weight, lose weight, change hairstyles, go back, watch them all. Hopefully they don't suck. But if you are one of the cool kids, I'm talking to you, you know who you are. If you're somebody who watches every video, you've thumbs up the video. You can do it now if you're watching on YouTube. You've written comments. You've done it all, but more importantly, you've ordered your supplies through me. Shameless plug. Thank you. It is because of you that I get to have haircuts. Really super short, by the way. But it's because of you that I get to live. So if you want to give a virtual high five, or if you just want to be an awesomely rad human being, please let me put your uh, orders in. My number is 862-312-2026. If you are a window cleaner or do any window cleaning, you need supplies, right? There's a ton of you out there who uh, do order from me. I really appreciate that. Make sure to let me know that you want one of these stickers. There's the newest cool kid one there. It's like reflective. It doesn't seem very interesting. But on everything else, if you like stickers and you go, wow, this guy's sticker board or whatever is super, super awesome. Well, I got something very, very cool for you. If you're watching this now, for the next month or so, might even be less than that now by the time you're watching this. But if you order an American Window Cleaner magazine, a new subscription to the American Window Cleaner Magazine because you're awesome and you're in the industry. We're going to send you six sticker sheets absolutely free while supplies last. You could have an awesome sticker board. By the way, anybody who's getting a new magazine, American Window Cleaner Magazine, go and check it out. AWCMAG.com forward slash sub. Uh, get it. Get the stickers and take pictures of where you put the stickers. So many of you have some awesome awesome things and i'm telling you it's literally six sheets of all window cleaning stickers yoda which by the way i don't have that yoda because it's not fond of prawn anyway go go get the stickers i'm done with shameless plugs anyway today we are going to be talking about the five ways to create an experience because if you have a window cleaning company, a pressure washing company, lawn care, any of the services, you guys aren't even in the industry and you're watching the podcast, in order to have a company that matters, it has to be an experience. It has to be. Now, I've talked about this a thousand times, this next example, but think about Apple. When you get a phone, you have to peel all the plastic off, right? The box, there's no seams. It's not cardboard. It's white something. We know it's cardboard under there, but it just looks amazing. When you get it, everything from the opening to the peeling to the removing the compartment where the other stuff is, it's the experience of making the purchase. And let's be honest, we clean windows. As I hit the camera there. But we clean windows. That's our job. Our job is to basically take the bird poop off the windows. That's literally what we do. Now... If you're selling window cleaning and there's 10 of you standing in a line, every one of you is going to make a clean window. That's the obvious, you know, the obvious understanding, if you will. If you line up 10 oil change places, every one of them is going to change your oil. That's a given. So people, they can't change, they can't be like, oh yeah, well we change the oil the best. No one would care about that. Because everybody's going to change the oil. That's the given. The given. In your service company, what you do is not what matters. It's how people feel, how they enjoy the experience. Remember, window cleaning is a luxury. And if you don't believe me, think of one situation where if somebody doesn't get their windows cleaned, they die. You think of one yet? 
There are none. Even if you're old and it's like, well, there's people in nursing home, they need their windows clean so they can see outside. Okay, that would be nice, but if they didn't, that would also not be terrible. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I wouldn't choose that nursing home, but that's not the end of the world. If a store, a restaurant, they have dirty windows, they're going to lose customers, but they don't have to clean the windows. Right? Close the blinds. What I'm trying to say is that we are a luxury business. The only way reason people buy our services is because they like how they feel when everything's clean and nice. Right? We're a luxury service. That's why we charge 80 bucks an hour, $75 a man hour. By the way, I talked to somebody the other day who was making $32 was their average per man hour. He was not working for somebody. He was his own company. If you're charging that little, you need to raise your prices. Don't tell me it's my, no, my customers don't. I'll, that's a lie. Your customers are the exact same as everybody else. And if you don't believe me, I'll give you 10 reasons they are the exact same. You can look at any of your competitors because they're charging more than you. Right? So charge more, by the way. You want to be at the at least average to what you want because there's a lot that goes into company. Anyway. But creating an experience has to be the number one thing that we do. Cleaning windows doesn't much matter, right? If you do a good enough job, it doesn't matter. If you do such a good job that when people look out the window, they don't notice flaws, you've cleaned the windows. If the next guy comes in with an orbital buffer and he cleans them so well and they're... Nobody knows and nobody cares and nobody needs it to be extra clean. They need it to be clean. If you clean the windows and it doesn't look like a horse sneezed on it, then it's clean. So the rest of it all comes into the experience. All of it. And there's five things that I want to let you know, I think, make a difference. And by the way, I always preface this. If you're new to the show, I will say this in basically every episode, other than trying to get your orders... 862-312-2026. And shameless plug about that. Uh, But no, everything that I say is I'm just some guy who sits in front of some stickers and I am a nobody. So take this all with a grain of salt. I'm not telling you this is the way it should be or any of that stuff. I'm just telling you my thoughts. If they help, awesome. If they don't, awesome. We'll see you next week. Hopefully those ones help. But here are the kind of five that we talk about. And the big one, uh, number five, that a lot of people don't do is follow-up. Now, there's follow-up in the beginning and follow-up at the end. Now, I have had so many text messages about this. that We did, talked about this a, a couple weeks back, two, three weeks ago. And there's something that I think is one of the most amazing, life-changing, business-changing things you could do. And that is, like the dentist, book the next job. I think I've, I've always talked about this and people always kind of went, well, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I can't do that. It's not, uh, I can't do that until I brought up the dentist. And I think that part is what resonated with everybody. It's the dentist does that. Before you leave the dentist, every single time you've ever been to the dentist, you have your next dentist appointment. That means that when they fill a six month block, they fill the whole year forever. People will change and move and that kind of thing, but then they have to increase what they're doing, right? Same thing with you is every time you leave a job, you should have their next appointment booked. Okay, Mrs. Jones, everything is done. Uh, When did you want your next appointment? Uh, Three months or did you want to wait six months? I didn't say yes or no. I gave you the choice. Anyway, we're not talking about that. But the thing is, is the follow-up. Now, if I book somebody for six months from now, I'm going to call them the week before and say, Hey, Mrs. Jones, this is Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I just wanted to let you know uh, we had you scheduled coming in for this next week. I wanted to remind you uh, for everything. And is there anything specific we should know uh, before we start? Anything that's changed since the last six months? No, no, I think everything's good. Oh, great. Awesome. Well, we can't wait to let the light in. Hopefully the year's been great to you and we will see you on Thursday. That pre-follow-up gets them in the mindset, well, that was really nice to let me know. That's great. These guys are so nice. By the way, if you're not nice on the phone and you're not overly nice, you don't have to be fake, right? My uh, overzealousness of of nice sometimes uh, doesn't translate. But have somebody on the phones who can be on the phone. By the way, I'm going to jump off. I don't have a script, but I'm going to jump off what we're talking about real quick. If you ever want to know... 
how phone etiquette should go. Watch or listen, I should say, to the radio. Listen to, just turn the radio on. The normal over-the-air radio and listen for the commercials. But instead of listening to the message and just having it a commercial, block everything else out and listen to the person's voice. By the way, I have a degree in radio broadcasting. And that's kind of why that's that side. But, but here's the thing. In radio, when you don't have any visual aspects or anything else and you're trying to keep attention, there has to be exaggerated variations in your voice. It has to be soft. It has to be loud. And it has to be... Listen to something. Somebody will be talking about carpet cleaning. And they just sound like they're the corny... If you met this guy in the street, you'd be like, what is this guy's problem? You have to be over-animated when it's just voice. It's how people communicate. It's how people get it. Nobody thinks you sound weird. I mean, some people do. Some of you think I sound weird. I get that. But listen to what it is. A lot of you listen on podcasts. You're not even watching on the video. That's why I am animated. That's why there are pauses, right? Do the same thing on the phone. Hey, Mrs. Jones, how are you? It doesn't sound weird on the phone, but it would if you're face-to-face because all the other elements come into play. If I'm only giving you one element, which is just the sound, I have to catch your attention, make you listen, make you pay attention, follow up, talk, all that with one, so be animated. But the follow-up is the key. The other thing is, and a lot of you are scared about this, tell you don't be scared but the follow-up afterwards calling the next day hey mrs jones this is jersey from xyz we just wanted to catch up with you uh how did everything turn out yesterday the text said everything looked great and i just hope with different sons of oh those guys are so nice oh it's so great awesome awesome well we have you uh booked for uh six months it's gonna be on the 13th of september uh should be between 9 and 10 so if anything changes let me know i did want to let you know before that that we also offer gutter cleaning from like that take that opportunity to kind of upsell really gutters maybe gutters are we can actually get you in for that did you want to add gutters to that what's the price then all that comes through but follow-up means you have taken the time to do that you've taken the time to call you've done that it's the same thing with the dentist and everything else they always follow up to make sure you're there right Following up will also stop anybody from forgetting their appointment because people forget their appointments. It's very, very common. Send them a calendar reminder. Follow up. Another big one is going to be branding. Branding. It's like the number four. Branding. Branding is one of those things that in our industry, people are not going to associate your brand across the world, right? Everybody can see the M and the golden arches and they know exactly who it is, where it is, all that fun stuff. But in branding, in what we do, it's not quite the same. But what it is the same is that everything looks the same. It looks like you really, really care. Man, this company. Remember, iPhones, iPads, MacBooks, iMacs, all of that stuff comes in a white box. They all have cords under the little pull thing. They all have stickers on every one and they each get those little white Apple stickers. The experience in the brand of each of it is the exact same. Every one of their computers, unless you get a colored option, which is a variance of, is that silver, matte silver with a big Apple logo. Like, understand branding is key to experience. Branding means that when you hand them an envelope with all your services, your logo, color scheme, everything is there. It doesn't look pixelated. It doesn't look like you just, like, photocopied it. It looks halfway decent, and it looks the exact same. Same. Every piece that you give them, if you have a flag for your thing and it drips down, every piece has got the flag that drips down. Right? Every piece needs to look the same and give the same exact feel from your ads to the papers you give them, to their folders, to the presentations, to commercial presentations, to bids. Everything needs to be branded to be the same. It ultimately makes your experience the same but it also gives that person that comfort because subliminally people understand when they've seen something before if you go up to an absolutely new customer and go hey i'm jersey with xyz window cleaning i would love to give you a bid on your window cleaning and i hand them some stuff they go what where are you from They don't understand any of it because none of it's familiar. They didn't hear any of it. Their brain has to calculate it. But 
just like EDDM, which we'll talk about on a, on, a, on a separate show, Every Door Direct Mail, you have to send it to the exact same person. Why do you send EDDM to the same exact person every week after week after week for three weeks? It's because that eventually, on the week three, they see it, even if they've thrown it away the last times, it's familiar. Now oh, these guys, yeah, I've seen them. I think that was a James, uh, Teddy, uh, Steve, Sally, Stephanie, I think they had them. I think the Jones had these guys. I think that's why it's from... It creates familiarity in their head, even if it's subliminal. That's why trucks look the same as your logo on your clothing looks the same as the documents you give them looks the same as the business cards and the flyers and the invoices and the envelopes. Everything looks the same because it builds a brand. It builds something so that they understand it's the exact same. Their brain is comfortable with it. It's the reason when you go back to your hometown, there's always that comfort spot. There's always that one restaurant that when you go there, I love this place. Why do you love it? I don't know. It's just the feeling. You're comfortable there. Humans want to be comfortable. By the way, have you ever been on vacation and not really used the bathroom the same way that you normally would? All of a sudden you get home and you're like, yeah, I can't wait to use my toilet. Comfort. It's the same toilet that's anywhere else, but it's your toilet. It's in your house. Building comfort is that brand. So build a brand and stick to that brand. Sometimes people kind of uh, go, well, I like this and I like this. You're not creating the same. Right? If you have a baby and you have a mustache and then you shave your mustache, the baby cries because they're not comfortable. They don't know who you are, right? Understand branding's familiarity. It is not for global recognition. It's not gonna happen no matter how awesome you think a company is, right? Fish, one of the most crazy uh, big franchises. You think people know the name if they've seen it before, but most people don't know the fish logo if they just saw the fish logo. If they're in window cleaning, then they know what it looks like because we see it a lot, but just a normal random person who's never gotten windows cleaned, they're not going to understand it, but they will know what a McDonald's is, right? Another big one, and the number three, is stuff other than cleaning. What else are you giving? And this comes down to value. When I say the word value, sometimes people think, cheap, that's a value, it's less than the other guy. No, 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 no. A value does not mean money. It means what you get for the money. Now, a brand new Lamborghini has a lot of value. There's a Ferrari, and I'm not a car guy. Somebody can comment on, in the YouTube. But they only make like 100 of them a year. And they have to like pick you to give it to you. It's like a million dollar car, right? That car at a million dollars has a lot of value. It's exclusive. A hundred of them. There's one of a hundred. You were picked for it. There's so much value in that car. Could you sell it for more? Maybe. They'll never invite you to uh, get a car again. But on top of that is that the value of the car does not mean the price. It doesn't mean if I got that car for $20,000, I go, wow, that was a good price. But the value is what you get for it. So there's other things you get with window cleaning or that service or the luxury or the experience that's not just window cleaning, right? You get super friendly staff. Everybody's got name tags on. Everybody's got a story. They're super personable. They all look clean and nice. They wear, you know, um, uh, specific things to kind of trigger different emotions. All of that comes down to what else is there. I give you a 100% satisfaction guarantee, a seven-day rain guarantee. We protect against Mother Nature. Can you believe that? We're going to do all of that, plus we're fully insured. We carry a $2 million policy. We're going to do your frames, your tracks. We'll wipe down your sills. We're going to do all of that for this price. You go, well. It's a lot of stuff. Next guy comes in and goes, yeah, I'll clean your windows for this price. I well, ain't much value in that. The other guy was going to clean it and he gave us a whole bunch of other stuff. Right? Remember that perks. 
or something else. Think of this when you watch uh, infomercials. Infomercials are terrible, I know. But there's really a science behind them. When you get something, they always show you everything you get. You'll get the beard trimming brush on top with a beard trimmer carrying case. You'll get the... And it's like, well, I don't want a carrying case. Why do I need a carrying case? Why do I need a brush? It's because when it's all done, they put it all together in a big picture with everything there, and they go, all this for two easy payments of $29.99. And you're like, oh, that's a lot of stuff for that $29.99, you know, two payments. of. But if you call now, we'll double your order. Well, I don't need two shavers. I don't shave twice. I don't, I don't need two. It's value. It's adding value. They didn't change the price. They didn't focus on the price. They're not even talking about the price as in it's cheaper than everybody else. What they talk about is what you're getting for that. Same thing. Throw things in there. Let them know you're fully insured. Let them know that you're a, 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 a better business bureau person. You're accredited. I hate the BBB, by the way, but maybe you are. Maybe you're in a local BNI group. Maybe you're this or this and this. We are accredited by this. We are one of the best outstanding members of this group, this blah, 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 blah. Putting it all in there and giving them that value that no one else, no other company can come to them and offer all that. No matter what, no matter where the price is, they don't get that. That's value. Value is not the price. So be valuable. The number two thing that you need to focus on is caring. This one sounds weird, I know. But subliminally, if you go to somebody's house, not as a window cleaner, just somebody, you're going over your friend um, Vern's house. Hey, Vern, how are you? Walk over and you don't take your shoes off. You just walk on their couch and sit down, put your feet on the table. They're like, who the, who is this guy? What is he? Right? You're not caring about them. You're not caring about their stuff. Now, if you go over there, oh, hey, can I take my shoes? No, leave them on. No, no, I'd rather just take them off. You go and you sit normal. Oh, it's a great house. Like, this is all that you're caring about them is different than when you don't. Same thing with window cleaning. If you show up and you wear shoe covers, right? If you have drop cloths, which by the way, if you don't know, moving blankets make the greatest drop cloth, super absorbent, soft. You walk in with all those pads. We leave our bucket outside the door. I'm putting up, you know, caution signs and, and, and everything else. And we're making sure that our hoses are off to the side for our water fed. We're making sure that our, our, our things are, are good. That shows caring. Wow. They really cared about my property. They really cared about this. I know guys who wear literal white gloves to move this stuff off the sills. If you go in there and you put your white gloves on, and say, well, first we're going to go, I'm all gloved up, and I'm going to move everything away from the, oh, you don't have to. No, no, it's part of our procedure. Don't worry about it. We're going to do that just so I know that uh, I don't get any of your stuff dirty. I know it's a heck of a chore to clean everything. People go, oh, my gosh. They came in with shoe covers and white gloves. This is amazing. You guys are just, that is the experience. That shows them you're not just there for the money. You're not just there to clean their windows, which we are. They're not there just to make the money and go to the next place, which we are. It's value. It's the experience. You're creating an awesome experience, right? I know guys that have dog treats. I know there's some liability to that. But if they got a dog, they have a pouch. Oh, hey, can I give them a bone? Can I give them a milk bone? People like that. People like that. Oh, they care so much. The next time you show up, maybe you remember something from the one. You've put it in your CRM. Oh, hey, uh, I know we were here six months ago, but your daughter ended up getting married. How did that go? Was that an awesome, uh, awesome event? Having something like this, oh my gosh, yeah. Now they're talking to a friend, talking to somebody who cares about it. I'm not saying you have to remember everything about them, but it goes extremely far for building the experience. When everything is said and done with all of this, if the experience is amazing, they will hire you no matter what. They will not even think about somebody else because they have nothing to offer them. All they got is the price to offer them. They don't care. Look what they got. It's already a luxury right? Building an experience. The number one thing that you have to remember with building an experience or creating an experience 
is the homeowner's feelings. The feelings they get, have, and like. The big thing with all of this, and some of you are going, oh man, who is this guy? What are you talking about? I'm going to go and clean the windows and I'm going to get out of there. Okay, then you are just a window cleaner. If I go in and I do all that, I'm their friend. I'm the person they like. If your friend right now is an HVAC guy, I have a friend in that is an HVAC guy. I will never ever call another HVAC guy, no matter their specials, their deals, or anything, because it's like, no, nah, I'm calling my friend. Hey, man, I don't get a deal. I don't think. I've never checked prices. I hire them because they're a friend. The same thing goes if you've created a feeling and an experience they connect to you. When they connect to you, you're more than just a window cleaner because there's lots of window cleaners out there. The feeling someone has in an experience is always what they remember. Think about the grocery store that you go to. Not one of you goes to a grocery store, a different grocery store, every single time. You're always doing another one. You've never been to the same one twice. You find one that's close, one that you think you get a lot of value for the stuff. They got a lot of choices. Oh, their deli is so nice. Their bakery is great. A lot of times you go to certain places because of that. The same thing with, you know, a restaurant. Yeah, they got good food, but so do 50 other restaurants. Why do you choose that one? What's the feeling you get, right? It's the same exact thing. Everything that you do is based on the feeling. Now, if you have two companies, because I know there's some of you out there who are going to send me emails or text me, I'm like, ah, or they're going to put it in the comments, which certainly do. It, by the way, if you put a comment on YouTube, it helps like this whole video thing go and more people see it. So that's super awesome. More people see it. More people call me to put their orders in. Huh? Shameless plug number three. Man, I'm on a roll. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you go somewhere because of the price and only the price, you go, well, yeah, I shop at Walmart every time because of the price. That's why I go there. The place is junky. It's, it's not an experience. I go there because of the price. Absolutely. You are basing that only on price. So if you put all five stores together and you're only basing it on price, you're going to Walmart. They're always the low price leader because that's their dumb tagline. But you also go there and there's like, you know, underwear on the floor and shelves are barren and just awful people. And you deal with it because the only thing they're offering is price. And if the only thing they're offering is price, if they're the lowest price, they got it because you're only shopping on price. In a luxury, no one says, oh man. I'm going to buy a motorcycle. Yeah. What kind of motorcycle are you buying? The cheapest one I can find. Hmm? What? No one says, man, I think I'm going to be a boat person. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy a boat. Which boat are you getting? Oh, the cheapest one I can find. Oh, okay. No one shops for houses that way. I got to find a house. This is the cheapest house I found. It's on the freeway. Yeah, but it was cheap. Most things have more value, right? That's what we are. We are a company that people will choose because of value. Again, if we were something that somebody needed, then it may be more focused on price. But a lot of times people focus on price because that's how they think about it because they are not their target market. Don't focus on price. It's not as big of a deal as you think. And if you think your customers out there will only pay you $25 an hour, it's because you haven't tried to do more. And if you had tried to do more, you did it wrong and you felt guilty and you unsold yourself. Those are the five ways to create an experience. Make sure to create an experience. And if you want an awesome, awesome experience, call me. I am your guy in the window cleaning world. I'm your supply guy. I'm your knowledge guy, maybe. I can help with bids. I can help with jobs you've never done before, how to do it. I just have questions on products. I'm not even buying anything, but I want to know what the difference is between X, Y, and Z. Let me know. I truly, truly want to be your guy. I want to put every order in for you. 
Doesn't cost you anything extra. Not a penny extra. It's easier. You just let me know. Jersey, everything's in my cart. I put the order in. I make commission on it. I get to continue living, making videos. And uh, you become one of the most awesome people. My number again, 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Speaking of experience, if you haven't gotten the new American Window Cleaner magazine filled with amazing, awesome things. By the way, this one is, is, is bent, so I apologize. It's a magazine. People get this stuff in their hands. They get this in their hands and uh, really, really enjoy it, by the way. Uh, there is memes and pictures and a lot of stuff you guys are submitting or posting out there. There are just pictures upon pictures upon pictures of different things that you guys are submitting. So super, super awesome, by the way. AWCMAG.com. And if you get it right now, you get this. Six full sticker sheets. Every month you get a new sticker sheet in the magazine. So be absolutely epic. It's like a double high five if you get a subscription too. So definitely let me put your orders in for you. Get a subscription because that's how I live. So thank you either way. But go out there, make sure to create an experience and more importantly, go out there 